Hey, this is Dave Nillette. I'm so glad that you're interested in our Seeing Jesus More Clearly Bible Studies. There is always something good going on here. If you want to learn more about the ministry, you can do so. Go into our website, bygraceinternational.com, and maybe you want to support what we're doing financially. If you'd like to be a part of that, you can go there as well, bygraceinternational.com slash give. Thanks. Welcome back to week two of our series, Escaping the Rat Race. If you missed part one, go ahead and go back and uh, check that out. We'll be here for you when you get back. Uh, but I, I want to pick up and, and read what we read last week in the book of Luke. It was only a few verses. And then I want to get into the story here of the foolish rich man um, and see what we can gather from this man's story. So let's, let's go ahead and look over at that, if you will. Luke chapter 12, and we'll start off in verse 13. It says, now someone in the crowd said to him, teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, you there, who appointed me a judge or an arbitrator over the two of you? But he said to them, beware and be on your guard against every form of greed. For not even when one is affluent does his life consist of his possessions. Now, verse 16, he told them a parable saying the land of a rich man was very productive. Notice this, the land of a rich man was very productive. The first thing I want to pull out here um, is, is that Jesus isn't you know, talking bad about this. It's, it's not necessarily a bad thing that this man's land was productive. He's not critical of that. But what, what happens here? Verse 17, he began thinking to himself, saying, what shall I do since I have no place to store my crops? And then he said, this is what I will do. I will tear down my barns and I'll build larger ones and I'll store all my grain and my goods there. And I'll say to myself, you have many goods stored up for many years to come. Relax, eat, drink, and enjoy yourself. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your soul is demanded of you. And as for all you've prepared, who will own it now? Such is the one who stores up treasure for himself and is not rich in relation to God. Now, um, in looking at that, the story of the rich man, the first thing we, you know, we said we wanted to pull out is, is the problem with this rich man isn't the fact that his ground was productive. Jesus doesn't seem to speak ill of this at all. It's not the fact that he was, he, he was rich, that he had good ground. It wasn't any of that. But rather, his problem was unchecked greed. His problem was, was, was greed that was allowed to grow to the point of, of when he had such a surplus of a harvest, his focus was no longer on those around him, on those that he was in fellowship with, that he was in, in communion with, that he was in relationship with. His focus was solely on how can I benefit myself? Um, you know, uh, Pastor Gregory Boyd, uh, he, he refers to this as, the, you know, the dangers of unchecked capitalism, right? You know, I'm looking for my way to profit. And, and if you'll forgive the expression, damn everybody else, right? This is, this is, this is really, um, you know, the, the, the point that Jesus is pulling out here, that this person is not considered, not considering rather, anyone around him. Uh, and in fact, he makes this danger or this decision uh, in a completely solitary basis. Think about that for a second. You know, even if you're, you know, if you are married, typically if you have a large, you know, a big impactful decision to make, you're discussing it with your spouse, with your partner, right? Um, but even if not, even if you don't have a spouse or a partner, you're single or, you know, you're, you're young, you haven't met the person yet, whatever the case might be, um, you're still going to take it to those around you. You're still going to bring it to those who you know can give you wise counsel, those who, who you trust to be a positive voice and a positive influence in your life. Yet this man does none of this. In fact, you know... <clears throat> Even in our hyper-individualistic cultures here in, in the West, we don't think of doing that. Businesses even, right? You, you hire focus groups and, and, and they begin to analyze the impact and the potential ramifications of the decisions they make. And, they, you know, they do get it wrong from time to time. Don't, you know, no mistake about it. But, you know, uh, it's, not, it's not perfect. But even in our individualistic mindset, we would say that this is quite an odd decision for this man to make. It, it's not, 
it's not a decision made within the confidence or the context or the confines of others, those around him. Um, it's a solitary decision made. And then when you, you begin to account for the fact that the the Jewish people, the Hebrew people, um, were were much more collectivistic as a society than we are here in America. Uh, much more in, in terms of looking at things uh, in relation to the whole than you and I are. How, how much more so does this scream something that doesn't add up? Right. This is not uh, this is not a normal decision for somebody to stop and, and and just make this completely in isolation. And so that that's what Jesus is highlighting here is that this is not normal. This isn't good. We would say today it's not a healthy decision to make, or it's not healthy to make a decision like this in such a way, in such a manner, in such a form or such a fashion, right? Um, but so, so, so why would he, he make a decision like this? Why wouldn't he consider those around him? Why wouldn't he consider those who, who might be impacted by his decision? Is it, is it because, you know, he's such a, a, a keenly minded individual? Uh, well, no, I, b- I believe really that the motive here is pure selfishness. If you look at it throughout the entire passage, this man's words are are, are completely eye focused. It's centered. There was a uh, there was a song. I, I forget even who it was by. I just remember the one line from it. You know, it's all about me, 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 and did I mention me? And, and that's that's really the. The, the picture that I get here, this person saying, you know, it's all about me, 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 me. Did I mention me? I'm the one who, you know, who everybody should be concerned with here. I'm the one who these, you know, these, um, uh, what's it called? That these, these barns impact, right? It doesn't matter the other people who rely on them for grain, for food, for, you know, whatever. Uh, it, it does not matter. I'm not concerned with them at all. What is important is how this impacts me, my life, my finances, my future, my ability to go and say, deuces, I'm going to just go kick my feet up and, you know, drink some, some fine Jerusalem wine and like be ready to go. That's what this man's saying. That's what he's, he's concerned with, right? Um, you know, he, he, his whole focus is on, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And, and so not only is, is he making this decision in isolation, right? He's, he's not just making this decision in isolation, but even worse than that, there's, there's not even a, a pause to ask God what to do, to ask God what the next steps are, to 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 think of those around you, right? This is this is the core foundation of Jesus's message uh, that we've talked about repeatedly. It's it's this new and better way of being human, of seeing those around us, uh, of, of looking at those uh, you know the marginalized, the outcast in society, and seeing how we can do better by them. And instead of doing that, this man's focus is on what can I get from this situation. Uh, how how can I best take advantage of this situation? And, and unfortunately, you know, this is uh, this winds up, you know, in this story uh, coming to be something very negative for this individual. And, and you know, we we so often default here in the church to a very. Uh, black and white mindset, for lack of a better phrase, where, you know, well, we see Jesus criticizing this person. And so we say, well, he was planning for the future. And so now nobody should plan for the future. You shouldn't be planning for retirement. Uh, You shouldn't be doing this. You shouldn't be doing that. Uh, And really, that's not I don't believe that's what Jesus is getting at here. Uh, Jesus isn't getting at the fact that this person decided to store his grains. It was it was the selfish nature with with, he, with which he did it. That instead of being generous to those around him, right? Instead of uh, instead of using this as okay, cool, we can shore up our family's financial position here, but we can also be a blessing to those in need. He said, how can we hoard this and increase our wealth exponentially uh, above those around us? How, how can we hoard all this grain? How can we hold on to this and just hold on tightly to it? So it's, it's not so much planning for the future, preparing for the future, but rather 
um, the, the, the point is how it's done and what is the aim? You know, what is our, what is our goal in this, in our planning? Um, you know, how, how do we plan when you plan for the future? When you look at things financially, you know, are, are you thinking in terms of other people? Are you thinking in terms of generosity? You know, are you thinking in terms of how you can help somebody around you? Um, you know, I'm, I'm reminded of a story of, of that my, my parents used to tell me, um, you know, back when they, you know, when they were married, when they first got married, um, you know, they were at, uh, they were at a Bible school and money was tight. I mean, you know, tight as tight could be, squeezing the eye in the tight, right? You know, this is as tight as you can get it. There was, um, you know, my mom was working and my dad was going to school uh, in the morning and then in the afternoon he was working a job and working, you know, full-time hours here during this. And, you know, he's he's going through, he's doing all these different things and and money was tight. And so they had to come up with a budget. And so they decided that they were going to you know, be strict with their money um, because, you know, the, the, the more you budget your money, the, t the further your money can go. Um, you know, the more you plan for your expenses and pre-plan things and all of that, the, the farther you can stretch a dollar. And so they began to do that. And my mom went and she had, she had broken down all the, all the money coming in each week and the money going out each week and what the, you know, what paychecks looked like and rent and grocery bills and so on and so forth. And, and so she went and she did this and, you know, she's all proud of it and she's got it worked out down to the last penny. I mean, there is not anything extra there to, to rub together. It's like the Grinch, you know, uh, in, in the animated, um, the original animated classic, I guess you have to say now, <laughs> um, you know, uh, how the Grinch stole Christmas where he, he goes through and he, you know, he pulls everything out and even at the end gets the magnet and gets the, you know, the little nails for the stockings and the little crumbs so the mice don't even have anything to eat. I mean, every single thing was accounted for. And so my dad looks over the budget and, you know, my mom is sitting there beaming and she's all proud of herself. She's figured out a way to stretch it. Doesn't think it could possibly stretch anymore. And my dad looks at it and says, you forgot the tithe. And, you know, my mom was, was crushed and, um, you know, you can, you can believe what you want regarding tithing or, you know, whatever the, the point stands is that, um, you know, in this, my mom had done, had done well to, to stretch it as far as she could. But my dad took a look at it and said, we can't forget to be generous. We can't forget to, 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 uh, you know, be, be faithful to, to do these things that we believe God's telling us to do. You know, they, they believe that that was what they were supposed to do. We can't, lose sight of our generosity in the midst of it. We, we, we can't lose sight of our generosity because we're trying to stretch this dollar as tight as it'll stretch. And if you stretch it anymore, it's going to snap. No, we can't do that. We've got to be generous towards, towards others. We've got to be generous towards the things of God. We've got to be generous towards life in general. Um, you know, so, so how do we think of others when we plan? Are, are we generous? Are you kind towards others? Are you making plans out of the goodness, the kindness of your heart? Or are you thinking of, okay, how can I get through this with the, with the least bit of disruption in my life and make it look like I'm taking care of those around me and just kind of presenting the facade and you just kind of weave your way through life, um, you know, trying to, to work your way through these things, you know, and are these things, are, are, are we thinking of, you know, are we thinking charitably? Um, you know, are we thinking the best of others? Are, are we thinking the good things in others? You know, the, the good motivations that we're sure that they have. You know, you've always got that one person, right? You know, where somebody's just being a complete and total jerk and somebody's like, well, you know, maybe they just had an off day. Maybe they didn't mean it. Maybe uh, sarcasm works differently where they're from. I don't know. Um, you know, but you've got that one person there who, who's always going to point this out. Um, you know, so, so are we thinking of it that way or are we, are we really thinking about how I can maximize my personal gain? What can I get out of this? How, how can I benefit my family, my, my group of five here, um, you know, Shelby and the kids, how can I benefit us five and no more? Instead of thinking, how can I put ourselves in a position where where we're able to be generous to other people, where, where my kids can feel that they have the freedom to, to follow the call of God on their life, wherever that takes them. Um, 
you know, and be able to be generous to others and to be a blessing to others. You know, what's, what's the balance there? What are we walking in? What's, uh, how, how are we doing this? And, and I think that that's the point that Jesus is trying to get across to us in this parable is that it's not so much having these things. It's not so much, um, you know, the fact that he decided to tear down his barns, like we said, but the fact that it was done out of a, 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 a purely selfish motive a purely selfish ambition, you know, and so I, I like this question here. It's, you know, really, what's the point of being well off if our selfishness cuts us off from those around us and there's no one left to share it with? What's what's the point in being well off? You know, um, I started, some of you may know, I started a new job fairly recently, and it's been a wonderful thing. We've been able to, you know, to, to thankfully earn more money, have better, you know, work-life balance, time off schedules, things like that. And it's been wonderful. And the best part is because we've been able to, you know, to have all these different things, the, the more money coming in, you know, and all of that. I've been able to to do more things with my family, to spend time with those people who are important to me, to be generous to those around me in need, to 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 be a blessing to people around us. We you know we had some some family friends who who ran into a situation with one of their kids a few months ago, and you know there was just a crappy insurance situation, whatever, 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 and we were able to just look at each other and say, hey, we'll you know we'll foot this much. Here you go, take it, no questions asked. We love you guys. We're able to be generous. And to, to be generous towards others the way that God is generous towards us, following the example of God, following the example of Jesus, because there's no point in being well off if I'm going to be so selfish that it cuts me off from those around me to share it with. I, I, I don't want to be isolated from those around me. I don't want my selfishness, my focus on how can I get my family to a position where we're financially independent to detract from my ability to bless others. To detract from my ability to be a force for good in somebody else's life. When I see a family friend in need, when I see somebody hurting, to be able to go and uh, as much as I'm able to, to meet that need, that's a blessing. That's something that's exciting. I don't know about you, but but uh, I f it felt good being able to just send them that money. It felt good just being able to send it over and say, here you go. We love you guys. Is there anything else we can do for you? That's a good place to be in. So Jesus' words aren't negative regarding his, his obtaining wealth. His words are about the selfish nature by which he obtained, maintained, sustained, and, and grew this wealth. I kind of ruined the rhyme pattern there, but you get what I'm saying. You know, that the, the issue is that his selfish nature cut him off from sharing with those around him. And I don't want to be that kind of person. I don't believe you do either. I, I don't want to be that kind of person. My heart is on what Jesus talks about at the end of this passage, that I want to be rich towards God. I want to be rich towards God. And what does that mean? Being rich towards God does not mean that, you know, I'm going to sit and have the best quiet time in my life every day for the next however many months. And I'm going to get so lost in worship at church. And, you know, I'm going to dance up front and glorify God and fall to my knees. And that's not what it means to be rich towards God. Rich towards God. It is a matter of living generously. God, everything I have is a gift from you. Everything I have is because of your grace on my life. Everything I have is because of your faithfulness to me. And so, God, I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you for that. And whatever you tell me to do with it, I'll do it. If you tell me to give it, I'll give it. You tell me to, you know, whatever, I'll do it. I'm going to make smart financial decisions, but God, if you tell me to give it away, I'm giving it away because it's yours. I, I, I want to live generously. I, I'm in a purpose to have quality relationships with my life. People that I know that even if we disagree about politics, if we disagree about, uh, about religion, about raising kids, about whatever the case might be, I know that people have my back. I know that there's, you know, there's a handful of people I can call and it doesn't matter 
what's going on? What's the last time I've spoken to them? What's the, you know, the, the last words we've said? It doesn't matter. I know that all it takes is a text or a phone call and they're in my corner, that they're there for me, that, that they're there for me because they know I'm there for them, that, that just like God is good towards us and rich towards us, we're going to be good towards each other. Uh, you know, so we've got those and, and then I'm going to focus on committing good deeds. I'm going to focus on being salt and light to a world around us that that's in need of some light that's in need of the love of Jesus that's in need of these things and you know we're we're going to focus on those things and that's what Jesus is talking about when he refers to being rich towards God and so next week we're going to pick up here and we're going to jump into what it really means to put our trust in God, we're going to look at, you know, Jesus' example from the Sermon on the Mount and really begin to dive into this, and I believe you'll get something out of it. If you're liking this, go ahead, hit the like button, and we'll see you next week.